All right, what's up everyone? It's uh, me and you, so me and the camera. I'm all alone today and uh, I can't wait. I wanna get this, I wanna get this installed and up and running. So it's me, you, and some freaking insane audio. So that's what we're gonna work on here today. I'm gonna be jank camera angles and all that stuff, but uh, we'll get it, we'll get it captured. I'll get you the, the, the gist of it. Uh, so what I'm doing here today, just kinda zoom in on all this stuff. So we've got a NAD C685. Get you some close-ups when we get over there. I've got um, two OSD audio subwoofer devices or you know, wireless receiver transmitters. I've got a pair of Dynaudio Core 59s. And I've got a pair of Dynaudio Core subs, which this is the real shocking thing for me. I had no intention of uh, doing or accepting Dynaudio subs. I just kind of, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, we all have that affinity for complete sets. Well, I wanted to buy, I bought pretty much everything Dynaudio makes. And so I uh, just added that to the list. Let's start with our C685 and talk about that. So here's the box, this is what it comes in. The concept here is this. The reason why I'm doing this big box instead of the little Blue Sound node like I've been talking about is uh, the Blue Sound node works, uh, but in order to connect the Blue Sound node, you have to convert. So we have to convert RCA to XLR because the, the core speakers only have an XLR connection. If you're not familiar, XLR is a three pin connection like this. So see, there's a, there's a separate ground. The grounding advantages of XLR are useless by converting it to RCA, but the only company, I, there's only two companies I found that you know have readily available cables like this. I'm sure there's more, but one that are easy to find. They're not readily available, but they're easier to find, at least for me, it was Monoprice, which is what this is, and uh, also uh, Mogami, which is a Geffen, you know, guitar thing. And Geffen wasn't, they weren't really interested in selling me one cable. And so we will have these up in the store. All this stuff is coming to the store. The cores are already up in stock. Um, the Core 7s, Core 47s, and these are the big boys, Core 59s. I don't have the Core subs up yet, but any of this stuff, if you want it now, if you're watching this and you want to do something like this, whether it's Dynaudio or the LYD, which would be the entry-level stuff, or PSB or whatever, just email me, Matt, at ObsessedGarage.com. I'll talk your freaking ear off on audio. I love this stuff. This is my current, actually, it's been my lasting obsession for most of my life. Uh, this and cars, I would argue that I, I actually like audio stuff more than, more than cars. Um, I don't know, it just seems to really motivate me to shop for this stuff. And so where this came about, um, I, was, I started thinking, I said, you know, I have these really expensive speakers and I got this really crappy environment in this garage, uh, a really crappy audio environment. So how, how, can I, how can I at least attempt to room correct and make it sound a little bit better? And so the Node is 550 bucks. I can get native 24-bit, 192 kilohertz. I can get high-res audio, uh, but uh, there's no correction. There's no corrective. There's no room correction capability on it. You can adjust bass and treble, which you really don't want to do anyway, and that's about it. Uh, and so then I started thinking, I said, well, what if I just took a preamp? That's what this is, a C685. What if I just take a preamp? This thing's 1550 bucks, so for a thousand extra dollars, I'm already into my speakers for six grand a pair and then two subwoofers for another eight grand. So I'm, you know, I'm piles of cash. I'm, you know, I'm 12 grand, uh, 12, 14 grand into this thing. Would it make sense to spend an extra thousand and then have full Dirac, D I R A C, Dirac, Dirac, however you want to say it, uh, room correction capability? to help offset some of the crappiness of, uh, you know, the, 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 the deficiencies of this echoey, vi you know, s vibrating metal cabinets, bright sounding garage. How can I overcome that to some extent? Now, I fashion myself as an audiophile, but I also fashion myself as a pragmatist, as a realist. You know, I'm realistic about what I'm gonna get in here. I also, and you can call it what you want, you can get angry or sad or whatever you want to feel. I just like the gear. I like the brands. I like the chase. 
I like to know that I have something fancy. Um, it's just fun. I don't really care about showing off to you. I like to look at it. I like to experience it. And when you have a, a fantastic audio experience in the garage, even though we're not getting the full capability of the speaker, it, it works out. So I'm going to keep chatting you up about the why on all this while, while I'm doing this, this install. If you, run, if you want to get to concise, just go to the product videos. We'll have very concise, very specific product videos. Go to the Obsessed Garage Shorts channel. You can watch all the stuff there. So when you take this thing out of the box, uh, you got a power cord. We've got this connection as well. So we've got a microphone. And I know a lot of people, they go, they say this mic's no good. I don't really care all that much. I'm just going to use this mic. I don't have a, a mini DSP is what it was commonly used, the mini DSP mic. Um, I'm going to put this thing on a tripod and move it in different positions and try to get some, some, some level of, you know, get tune out some of the really harsh frequencies, some of the harsh issues here in the garage. I'm going to show you how, to, how I do that. I don't know if we'll get to that today. We might do that separately. But I at least want to get the system up and running here today. So the thing I was struggling with is I just want to put this, you know, the, the whole plan here was just to take this little blue sound node and just stick it up behind the speaker, connect everything to my phone, everything's good. This big box doesn't fit on the depth of this, uh, or it pokes out too far. And so then I started thinking, well, why don't I just put it in the center here? I need to clip off some of those wires. Why don't I just center this thing up right on the, right on the center cabinet, and then I have easy access to it. Now... I'm going to touch this box very little, you know, almost never. I'm just going to use everything, control everything from my phone. So the C68 is a digital analog converter. So this is a pre-amplifier. There's no amplifier in here. There's no wattage output. There's no speaker terminals on this thing. It's just a box with, with outputs and inputs. Uh, the other disadvantage to this in its current setup, you know, if you wanted to use this for video, which I'm not, um, you would need to get a module. So there's an MDCC module, so it'd be another 350 bucks. You could get a three input, one output HDMI module to put in this thing if you want to hook up something like an Apple TV or something like that. So, um, again, the, we'll, we'll be sharing all this stuff on how to do all this stuff, and we'll have, I'll have systems and diagrams, and the audio page on obsessedgarage.com will be very robust. But the way we like to do things, you know, I like to have a, you know, uh, you know, I like to have a how-to video. I like to have a why video. I like to have, um, you know, great photography. We write the descriptions, make sure we know how to ship the thing. We get the box to put the box inside of. Uh, and so it gets, it gets complicated for us to do this. So it takes a little time, especially with all the chaos that I'm creating, wanting guys to do this, do stuff. You notice on the, on the back here, really the only thing we're going to do here is we're going to have subwoofer output. So I screwed on our antennas, one for Bluetooth, one for Wi-Fi. This has Blue OS built into it, so that's the interface. That's the connectivity to my phone. To make this, and I've been harping on this a lot, I'm talking about audio, this is the player. Your phone is the remote control. Whereas when you connect to something via Bluetooth, your phone is the player and the remote control, uh, and then your amplifier is amplifying the speakers. That's not the pref preferred way to do it. The preferred way to do it is to have this be the player, uh, because your phone via Bluetooth can't send, you know, high res signals, at least not yet. Um, can't say, you know, there's, there's sound degradation. I mean, you can get, I think it's 44.1 kilohertz, 16 bits. So you get CD quality, which is great. But if something is mastered and better than CD quality, why wouldn't we want to do that? So what I have here to connect, power cord, obviously. So we're going to run that. We're going to run an extension cord for that. Um, and then we've got to connect our, our microphone. So this, there's this little, this little uh, dongle thingy. And so you plug this into the USB connection. Uh, in a perfect world, you'd, uh, and I didn't run an Ethernet connection over here, but you would connect that Ethernet to this. Um, that way, you'd always have it connected, and it's just more efficient. But um, I found that you know, this thing works great you know, wirelessly through your phone. So then you could go optical in. So let's say that you didn't. Um, so, so the way, let, let's say that I had a TV over there, and I ran an HDMI cable through the wall. Uh, then what I would do is I'd set my Apple TV up here, I'd plug it into here, input, and then let's say I had a Blu-ray player as well. I would go Blu-ray, input. Again, I don't think we're going to be doing that very often in the garage. Uh, and then I would run the HDMI output so I, through my MDC, mod, MDC module back to, back to that connection to the TV. 
The other thing you could do, you have a smart TV, you could, in most TVs now, most displays, you plug everything into the TV, so strap your Apple TV to the back, or just use the onboard operating system, like the Android operating system on a Sony, or, um, or WebOS on an LG, or you know whatever your, or Samsung's, I don't know what Samsung's operating system is, maybe it's Android, uh, and uh, you could just run an optical cable back to this as well, so you could run an optical in. For this purposes, we're doing stereo with two subwoofers. Just because I'm doing two subs because the room is giant. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so I plug in my dongle. This allows me, it gives me an eighth inch connection to plug in the microphone, which we'll work with that later after we get everything set up. I got my power cord. We'll plug that in once we put it up top. And now I got two XLR cables and that's it. So this is the only, this is the only connections that I'm gonna do for the speakers. And then the only connection I'm going to do for the subwoofers are these little uh, Y adapters I'm going to do. This has two subwoofer outputs. I don't think they're discrete subwoofer outputs. So again, we'll have these all in the store. I have these in stock. I have them here available. Um, I just don't have them up on the store yet. So if you, again, if you want to do this right now, just call me. I know you're probably not going to want to do a $17,000 system like what I'm doing here, but um, you know, we'll, if you do, let's do it. If you know, if you want something in between, or you want some advice, let's let's talk about it. I'd love to talk about it. You guys buying this stuff is what allows me to do this. So, you know, some people don't like that, but most rational people understand how the world works. Okay, so I got my two subwoofer connections because I'm going to run two subwoofers wirelessly. And unfortunately, the way that this is set up, the way that I'm searching for subwoofer. Um, uh, transmitted receivers and one I need one that I can get so you when you start suggesting all of these I have to be able to buy it wholesale uh, and uh, a lot of companies like my favorite one is from Outlaw Audio uh, the problem with that one is they don't they only sell direct to consumer and uh, what I wanted to find that one of the disadvantages you got it it has stereo in stereo out the cool thing about this OSD audio one is it has stereo in, but mono out to the subwoofer, which is perfect. So that means I don't need as many cables to make this work. Okay, so those are the only four cables that we're gonna have coming out of the back of this thing. And then we're gonna do our subwoofers wirelessly. I guess I, I, I could wire them, so I could run an RCA cable to them. Or what we should do because my subwoofer is on, on each side of the cabinet, let's scrap this whole idea uh, of going wireless. Let me go, go get two, and since I'm putting my thing right here, yeah, let's do that. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out of the back, because this doesn't have a XLR subwoofer output. So what we'll do is we'll come out of the back of the subwoofer connections here, and I'm just going to want to run a wired connection. That'll mean less boxes up top here. So these, the, the transmitter and receiver look pretty much the same. So these things look like this. This will save me uh, 230 bucks. See, savings. I'll add up the system at the end here. So here's the subwoofer receiver. So see it has a sub out connection right there. Uh, and so this you would strap to the back of the subwoofer and then you would um, plug it in via one of these cables. So I'd come RCA out of the back of this, XLR into the XLR only, the, the core subs are XLR only, and um, that's how we would do it. But instead, I'm gonna run cables. So let me go grab two more XLR cables. These are cables I got from Sweetwater Dynamite, which I've just had, so I just wanna use them here. But I do have XLR cables from Monoprice, and I also have XLR cables that are much nicer cables that are coming from Metra um, that will have various ones available. It's not critical. I don't think that you spend a boatload of money on the XLR cables. Um, the ones from Metra are a little more expensive, um, but uh, I'm gonna go grab two. I think I'm gonna need, I'll do two more 25 footers and yeah, because I have six footers, and I don't think that's six feet. Six feet's not going to be long enough. No, definitely not. No, I need at least eight feet. Okay, let me go grab two more cables, and then we'll get moving on this.
Okay, so I got two 25 footers, which can be too long, but I don't have anything in between. What I really need is a, yeah, I need the four meters, the 12, 13 footers that I have coming. So let's pull these little organizers off. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just keep it all now. And I don't think this really matters because, you know, the, 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 through cabling, I think that uh, the audio signal travels at like the th p past the speed of light. So whether one cable is 20 foot and the other is 25, I don't think it really matters. But I kind of want to cut a hole in the wall. You may do that. So I'd like the speaker to go back another couple of inches. But it can't because the, uh, the XLR cable and the power cable are sticking out in the back. I think our isoacoustic stand, I mean, gosh, it's freaking lights. This one connection's bad. So I got my power cord run down there. I'm going to need an extension cord for this power cord, very likely. Let's just run the wires and then we'll figure out how to make it look pretty. Yeah, I think I'm just going to let the wire go. I don't love that, but that's what I'm going to do. So these are both going to be on the inside. Let's make sure we got this set up properly. Standby, full, dark, right speaker, anechoic, wall, 24 and 112. And our analog input. Yeah, that's a little dicey. Step on my subwoofer. And then I'm gonna get our power cord down there, so I'm probably gonna have to put an extension cord on this. Let's just we'll just drop our XLR cables behind the cabinets and we'll see what happens. Yeah, I don't love that. It's probably too late to pull the cabinets back. Unless I take all the drawers out. See if I pull the cabinets a few inches off the wall, then I'll be able to push this back. I think it's, I mean, I don't, it's not going anywhere. Probably do the second sub. So let me get my sub connection now. Run across here. Well, someday if I come in here and my $3,000 speaker sitting on the ground, laying on the ground. I'll know that it was a mistake. I wonder if I can just get away without doing a uh, extension cord. So I've got this plugged in. Here's my, my one extension cord I have running. <clears throat> That's what I wanted. Figures. So the three three plugs and I've got four. So I'm gonna do something shady like I did before. I don't love that, but I very rarely have anything plugged in here. These lights require almost no power. So the subwoofer is the one gonna be drawing the juice whenever it's working. But I think we should be good. It's a 20 amp circuit on a little baby power cord, but I think we're gonna be okay. Not advisable. I should have run another extension cord direct for the subwoofer connection. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Okay, let me just tuck this subwoofer in here and let me kind of test out the system. The whole copyright free idea doesn't really work. So the main question I have is can I, how can I deal with, let me just tuck this back here for now can I deal with the um, vibration of the cabinets? Mm. I'll tie this up later when I'm not wasting your time. There's a wire loom there. Okay. I'm going to test this out real quick. Actually, let me just show you how we set it up. All right, so all I do is this. I go here, blue OS. Now, I've already set this thing up, so we'll see if it recognizes it pretty quickly. Nope, it didn't. That's because it's never been connected to this. So I'm gonna add a player. There it is, C658. 
OGHQ C658. I've already I've already played with this one, but we're gonna join it. But remember, we're not airplaying the music because airplay is also limited to I think airplay is limited to 48 kilohertz, um, 24 bits, 48 kilohertz or something like that, 44.1 kilohertz. All right, so we're joined, so we're connected. So now to use this, so I'm always going to use the Blue OS app, you know. So I'm using this app now. Now I'm connected. Oh, it says it's still needs setup. Let me cancel. Let's see if it shows up here. I don't need to. So if I go home. There's my C658. If I click the three dots, I go to audio settings. And I have one subwoofer attached, so see there's not really any adjustment. Subwoofer or no subwoofer. We're set. Now we're gonna go in and once we go in and set up the Dirac connection, then we'll have the option to go for, go with our different tunes. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna play it here for a second. And uh, I'll come back to you with some you know, copyright free music. Okay, I've been toying with the idea. So this speaker's you know, four feet from the center. This speaker is like seven feet from the center. Right now I only have one subwoofer connected. So this is Bryce's buddy, Seth Baker. So we can use his music royalty free. I just need something, something that I can do for you on camera here. So I got the mic on me. Subwoofer is freaking insane. And I'm about to hook up another one. That's only the first one. I got two. I'm gonna unbox this one. This thing. So it's nine or four nine inch woofers in each box. Sorry, I'm still not sure about that. Get out of here, Siri. Okay. That's, that's just airplay, but you know, I'm using this microphone capturing in this room. So let's unbox the subwoofer. Let me come down with it. Okay, let's unbox this thing. So I've only unboxed one of these and it was a freaking nightmare because the thing weighs like a hundred and something pounds. So I think the way to do this, I think I'm gonna flip it over, then I'll take the screws out and then I can just lift the box up instead of trying to lift the subwoofer out like I did last time. I think that's the way to go. It's 60 kilos in the box like this. So, but it's packed really, really well. So these will have to come to you freight. Sucker's 4,000 bucks. 
but it's one of my accidental favorite subwoofers I've ever heard. It's just so, so good. You know, I, you know the JTR stuff is way cool, but there's just something about the way these sound. I just, I think I'm gonna put this in my theater office when I build my house. Yeah, I hate to say it, the Viper chair, the tool tray that I put on the other chair is no good. I keep, it's only a matter of time before I whack something with it. This one, I don't think that's gonna happen. I got it up a little tall here, but doing the job. The tricky part with all this audio gear that I now have and I'm testing is where do I put all the darn boxes? Cause I got boxes galore. I should keep the box of this thing. Because, you know, I, whenever something new comes out, I'll sell it, I'll get, something, get something else. So actually I should buy all this gear and then once a year, sell it off, make profit on it. You know, but you, you, know, you can still get a discount. I gotta put some fucking dry lube on this thing. It's industrial strength silicon lubricant. Let's try this stuff. A little bonus footage for you here. I think that's about all I need. We'll try that and we'll try something else later. So the uh, thing I should mention, the Core 59s, I do have an unboxing video. Why do they do that little trap door there? Maybe just so you can see that it's in there? I don't know. Okay. So, this ought to be the bottom. It's like the perfect speaker material for the garage. I'm telling you. I wouldn't steer you wrong. Oh. Man, that's heavy. Dang it, I don't want to do that. I'll keep this intact. No, that's not going to happen. So, ah, the feet are going to be underneath here. I've got some other feet. Let's put those on. All the feet are the same. So I'm going to I'm going to get a uh, ISO acoustics. Maybe I can convince them at some point. But a Ice Acoustic now makes a subwoofer pedestal. You put the subwoofer on. It still got to stick to it? It does. Not enough though. This thing is so heavy that it'll, it'll make them stick. So while I got you here, let's show you, show you the back of this thing. This is old school. Test garage video. No fancy cameraman. No help. All me. <laughs> Which sucks, by the way. All right, so here's how I'm setting the subwoofer up. So I have the input sensitivity at plus 24. I've got the SPL set at 112 which we'll adjust, we're going to adjust. Attenuation is zero. The digital channel doesn't matter because we're going to go to the analog input here. So the digital end doesn't matter. Um, I'm running, we should probably run it full. I'm going to put it as free, anechoic, free, and let's run it as full and this and the switch to, um, to standby. That way it powers up whenever it gets a signal. And you have service and World clock. I think the world clock is for um, again mixing boards and stuff like that. Look at the finish on this thing. It's perfect. It has little positions to like like if you wanted to stack them, you could stack them on top of one another, or you could fit like a core seven on top of this as well. You know, and again, this is a subwoofer for design for a studio.
You don't really need anything from the manual. You needed the manual, it's online anyway. You should stop shipping stuff with the manuals. And there's some new feet if you needed them. I got an extra one, but there's no power cord in here. Yeah, none. No power cord. How dare they spend this much money and I didn't get a power cord? We'll be all right. I got, I got power cords coming out the rear. Yeah, it's not in here. Oh well. We'll save this box for some other day in the future. So now this subwoofer is going to go over here. So remember, we're running our XLR into the analog input, and that's it. I'm going to do all our tuning with our die rack. So I'm probably going to play with that off camera, and then I'll make a die rack setup video. I, I just need some more time. I've done a little bit of die rack stuff, but not enough to be intelligent on camera. It was just kind of boring for you. We'll do the tucking afterwards. So the question is, is this going to be too tight for the subwoofer to sound any, any good? We'll play with that. <clears throat> Let's see what it sounds like with two of them. <laughs> this is awesome. Look at that. And then I'm going to tie up all the wires and make it look nice and pretty. So now the question is going to be, I got to play with subwoofer placement. It sounds to me like when I disconnect one, it sounds to me like they're out of phase and they're kind of canceling each other out a bit. So I wonder if it might end up being better to put, um, either do one sub or to stack them. You know, do I even need this much amplitude for this room? So anyway, that's my core setup. I'm going to play with the wiring, put some wire loom on them. Um, 
I, uh, I may play with Dirac, but probably not today. Um, right out of the box, he's pretty fantastic with the with the uh, C658. Um, the only NADs that I don't like is the the digital ends, the M33 and the M10. Right out of the box, they sound they don't sound so good, and so you really need Dirac uh, room calibration in order to make it sound decent. So um, yeah, this is an evolving audio setup. And uh, part of the fun here is that I'll share with you the results as I tweak and listen and tweak a little bit more, and then I'll be able to, you know, be uh, more intelligent as we as we go through. And I may shoot, we may we may determine that having two subwoofers doesn't make sense. Um, you know, it just depends on the room on whether two subwoofers can work well or not. You know, what might work is if I stack two of them, and uh, it might they might sound best there. So I need to play with it, listen to some stuff and I'll keep you up to date. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. So what happens when the, when the force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor, the floor, to the floor.